name is Kelly Dale with OffTheBeadedPathBeadStore.com. Thanks so much for joining me today because we're going to learn how to make a beautiful Aztec inspired bracelet that uses new symbol findings from the beadsmith, quarter tila beads, and mini gem duo beads. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to get started. So this is the bracelet that I'm going to be showing you how to make today. I absolutely love the look of this bracelet. Uh, the thing is, it uses new symbol findings that the beadsmith has came out with. And I cannot say this word, so I'm going to play it on my computer for you. Safatagi. <laughs> I chuckle every time I play it. Safatagi. So that is how you say the word of these new findings that they've come out with. So you can see here, the findings actually have a spot for a gem duo bead that fits perfectly in that spot. So you're gonna need three gem duo beads, as well as three of the Safatagi. components. You're gonna need some glue to glue these mini gem, or these gem duos in place. Now I'm gonna be using the Loctite uh, gel glue. You can also, if you don't have that, use your E6000 glue, whatever you want to use. <clears throat> I'm going to use, um, I'm going to show you two different ways to finish this off. Number one, I'm going to show you how to use the Axos Magnetic Closure. The Axos Magnetic Closure looks really nice, but the biggest issue is the company that makes these or releases these does not keep a massive amount of these in stock, so it's hard for me to get tons of them at one time. So, I'm going to show you how to use that, but I've also not got this one finished just so I can show you how to add a different type of clasp on there. So, you can either use the Axos or any type of clasp that you want. You are going to need a few grams of a mini gem duo. So, your mini gem duo is going to go down the center of the bracelet. Everywhere you see the purple here and everywhere you see this beautiful kind of uh, bronze copper here. You're gonna need a size 15 seed bead that's gonna go on each side of your mini gem duo. And you are gonna need two colors of a quarter tila bead. So the quarter tilas are a quarter size of your normal tila bead. They are made by the Mayuki company. They have two holes and I'm gonna use the two colors. The reason I'm gonna use the two colors, you can see here I have turquoise, and then I have a little bit of a cream here just to give it some different color dimension. And then on this one, I love this one, because I used like a, uh, almost like a purple iris, and then a teal, so you get that little pop of teal in there as well. So you need two colors of that. Then you're gonna need your favorite thread and needles. So. I am actually going to play with the new gold tan in the dragon thread. Not 100% sure about this one yet, but I think this is what I'm going to use because you are going to see the thread on the outside of your quarter tila rose here on the ends. It's really good if you can use a color that goes with what you have. So that way, like if I was to use black with this, you it would look terrible. So I've used the green. I could have probably got by with the white on this one. Uh, this one, I actually used the new blue of the dragon thread. You can see it blends really well with what I've used. So again, today, I think I'm gonna try that gold tan, but you can use whatever you want. Just make sure it's a size six or a .006 or smaller. So whether you use a dragon thread, the fire line, whatever thread, make sure to use that. And you can use a 10 or 12 needle. The very first thing that you want to do when you get your findings is you want to look and make sure that all of your holes are open on each end of your piece and that your holes are closed. Um, normally, they're really, really good about these findings, but I have gotten a couple of bad batches sometimes that maybe this is this little piece here is broke or there'll be something missing. So that's the first thing you need to do. Then you're going to take your glue and you are going to glue your gem duos into your findings. 
So I'm going to take, and it's just a very, very small amount of glue. So you can see there, I've just put a tiny drop of glue down into my piece. Now I'm going to have to get another Gem Duo there. That one has a little bit something on it. And you just want to take and press it down into your finding, just like that. Let me grab another gem, because that one has a little spot on it, and nothing is going to be hidden on the top. So if it's got a little spot, you might as well chunk it. So I'm going to get my finding here. And I'm going to put that in. And most of these fit really, really well, and they're really pretty. Uh, sometimes you'll have to pop it in, like you heard that one kind of pop in just a minute ago. So. Okay, yep, and I had to kind of pop that one in too. So you heard how they popped in place. Um, so you will just glue those in. And if you do one like this, you see the holes, but that's completely okay. Um, if you do something like this or like the green I'm doing here, you're not going to see the hole through the bead. Now that you've got those done, if you use your E6000 glue, you're going to have to let those dry for a little while. If you're using this, you can immediately go to work on your piece. So I've threaded my needle with two yards of thread. Two yards of thread will do our center piece that we're going to build here. It would make these two, and it should do the one side of your bracelet or come close to doing. If you don't want to work with a longer piece of thread, just start with about 12 inches of thread. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a stop bead onto the thread. And I'm gonna make sure and leave myself about six inches of tail thread. And I'm gonna go back through this bead again, again so that it becomes my stop bead. And I'm going to pick up, I'm going to call one color my main color. I'm going to call this an A, and then I'm going to call this other color a B. All right, so A and B. So to start, I'm going to pick up an A. And if you'll notice here, it's the same way with a regular Tila. You have a flat bottom to your piece, and you have a little bit of a curved top to the piece. Do not stress about trying to make sure all of them are up when you work with these because honestly, you cannot tell if you look on this bracelet, you cannot tell what's the top and what's the bottom, okay? You absolutely cannot tell. So, do not stress about top and bottom. Pick up your quarter tila and you're gonna go through the hole of one of your findings. And remember, I'm starting out with an A. So right now, I have a quarter tila just hanging out here, and that's completely fine. Because now, I'm gonna pick up another quarter tila, A. I'm gonna pick up a 15, a mini gem duo. Now, when you pick up your minis, number one, Check your holes there, make sure your holes are good. But then number two, lay it down the way that it's gonna go on the bracelet. So that way when you pick it up, you know that you're gonna pick it up with the rounded top up. Because with these, you can't fudge it. You have a rounded top and you have a flat bottom. So if you get it and you put on the flat bottom, you will be able to tell because you've got all these nice rounded tops and flat bottom, so you will definitely be able to tell. So put that on, then you need another 15, you need an A, and then I'm gonna go through the other hole of my finding. Now, as far as your 15s are concerned, I'm using my Yuki seed beads, and they work really, really well for this project. If you try to use a Toho seed bead, they're just a little tiny bigger, and you'll notice here, it's kind of hard because this is so shiny. Um, let me see if I can do it this way. You'll notice here 
that this fits perfectly in this spot. So if you don't use this brand of seed bead, it may, um, you may have a little bit of a harder time getting in that little spot. Now I'm gonna pick up another A and I'm gonna let this A drop all the way down to the base. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come back through the other hole of the same Gem Duo that my thread is coming out of. I'm just working in the opposite direction. I'm gonna hold that bead in place as I pull the thread straight down like this. Now this is where your next binding is gonna come into play. So I'm gonna go through the outer hole here of the next binding. And I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come through the next A here where I started. I'm going to hold it and then pull that in place. Thread on 115 go through the open hole of the next mini gem duo. Just the one bead there. Pick up a 15. And this time, if you can do it, and kind of get it in place here, if you can go through all of them at once, you can push it together here and kind of try to go through these three things at once. But I'm going to go through my next A, the whole of the finding, and then the next quarter Tila. So that when you do that, this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and I'm going to pull off the stop beads. I just grab a hold of it and pull. Now, if you want to pull that in just a little bit and make that a little bit smaller, you can. But now I'm going to, thr not thread, I'm going to tie these two threads together. Just a couple of knots. And at that point, I'll take my needle and I will come down and I will go straight across. If you can do it in one go, you can go straight across through your piece. If not, just go through what you can go through. And when you pull, give it a little tug and it will hopefully tug your knot into here. If not, like I think my knot got a little too high up. If not, when I go to do this one, put my needle on this, I'll tug it through. But you definitely want to go through and reinforce this again. So you see here, I'm gonna go through all of the beads that I've added. And then I'm gonna take, you can take scissors, whatever you want. I'm gonna use the wildfire cord cutter and I'm just gonna give that a little zap and get that thread finished. And then I'm going to put a needle onto my short tail thread here and I'm going to run it through to get rid of this thread as well. Once both threads have been trimmed, then this little part is complete. So you are going to take and you're going to do the exact same thing that we just did here to add our third binding. I have my three pieces connected now, but I wanted you to see what a huge difference thread color plays in your project because I started out with the tan and gold. I did not like how bright the tan and gold was on the end. So I switched to the green uh, in the dragon thread and you can see there how different the green looks compared to that gold tan. Even when you hold it like this, the green blends really well with my bead, whereas that gold tan just kind of almost to me sticks out like a sore thumb now. 
So at some point over the next uh, couple of hours, I will go back and I will fix that one. But I'm going to go ahead and keep going to show you what we do next. So we're going to start it out exactly like we did here, but we're going to make our long band. So I'm going to use what I had left over from here. And I'm going to put my stop bead on. Start the same exact way. So I'm going to pick up my quarter tila A and go through. And then pick up an A, 15, mini, 15, A, and go through my open hole. Now I pick up a mini and I let it drop. Doing the exact same procedure, I'm going to come back through that same bead again. But now this time, this is where the step comes different. Because in these last two, we would have put a finding here. We're not going to do that. We're going to pick up an A and go through the next A. So it's going to pop us an A in just like that. Now pick up a 15 and go through the mini. Pick up a 15, go through the next A. And then I'm going to pick up an A and go through the final A here on the end. So instead of having another component, now I have two A's sticking up. Just like we did here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this time and pull that stop bead off and tie these two threads together. Once I have those tied, we are going to do a little bit of reinforcement, but we also have to get into position to start our next row. So I go through the entire base row, pull this through, and I'm just, for now, I'm going to leave this short tail thread when you are ready at any point over the next couple of rows, you can stitch this through and get rid of it. Now, this time, when I go through, I'm going to continue all the way through to come out of the second A that I put on here. All right. Just the bottom hole. So, I'm not going all the way to the end. I'm stopping right there. Gosh, I've got on too many bracelets today that this thread is getting caught on. There we go. Now I'm going to step up. When I step up, I'm going to come through the open hole of the same A that I'm coming out of, but I'm going to be working in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to hold that and pull the thread through, just like that. Now this is where our Bs are going to come into play. So we pick up a B quarter tila, a 15, a mini gem duo, a 15, and a B. So again, we've got a B, a 15, a mini, a 15, and a B. And we take the needle and we're going to go straight across and we're going to go through the A right across from where our thread's coming out. Oh, I like it. It's going to give just a little bit of sparkle in the bracelet. Not a lot, but a little bit. Now, this time, we're going to pick up another A. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to let my beads drop all the way down. And then I'm going to come back through the other hole of the same bead that my thread is coming out of. So, I put my finger there. I'm going to pull this, and I pull it all the way tight. Then we pick up an A, go through the B, 
pick up a 15, go through the mini, pick up a 15, go through the B, and now this time our step is going to change a little bit because this time instead of picking up one A, we're going to pick up two A's because you notice here we don't have anything here on the end to help us out. So I let these drop down, but I'm going to take the second one that I threaded on, this end one here, and I'm going to flip it to where it lines up with this row that I just finished. So I've got one that's flipped this way and one that is flipped downward. So if I pull this back, you can see there how those are flipped. I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna come back through the other hole of the second one that I threaded on. And then I'm gonna go straight through the row that it lines up with. Pull this all the way through, and once it's pulled through, now you see that it's completely set up the way it needs to, and then I'm going to come through these beads again, so that when I come all the way through, I stop with the second A that I threaded on. So I'm not going all the way to the end here, I'm stopping with this one. And now I'm gonna step up by going through the open hole of the bead that I have in place. So at this point, you are gonna be doing the same thing over and over and over. It's just one set, like our next set is gonna be with A's, and then the following set will be with B's, so that you have A's, B's, A's, B's, A's, B's, all the way down. So I'm gonna show it to you again really quickly. So again, this time I'm gonna be picking up an A, a 15, a mini, a 15, and an A. I come straight across through the next A over here. Lay that down, there we go. Pick up one A, let that bead fall to the base, and then I'm going to come back through the other hole of that same A. I just kind of put my finger on it, not like that, <laughs> put my finger on it and pull so that it gets that row tight. Thread on an A, go through an A. A 15, go through the mini. 15, go through the A. And now this time, remember I'm on this end, so I'm gonna pick up two A's. So two and let them drop all the way down. The first one here flips upward the second one flips downward towards your completed beadwork. We go through the second hole of the one we're coming out of here, and we go straight across through the row that it's lined up with. Hold those beads in place. Pull it tight, and now you have it set up for your next little section of beads. So I come all the way across. There's a lot of back and forth in this project, but I actually like it because you get a lot of good reinforcement on your piece as you're going back and forth through it. Now, if you don't like how it just chops off here on the end with thread. If you do not like that, you certainly have the option of doing a little pico of maybe 315s here 
or something of that nature. I just thought it had a very cool Aztec design to it. So that's why I kept it just like it was. So now I would do the same thing we just did, but with my B's in there. So that, like I said, you will have A, B, A, B, A, B all the way down. Now you're gonna keep going with this until you have, do not have basically these in place. I actually have to take this back out because we want to finish with just coming out of this end bead right here. So continue with the project and I'll be back in just a minute to get to my length. Hey guys, it's me, Kelly Dale. I hope that you are enjoying learning how to make this awesome bracelet. It's a lot of fun, but I wanted to interrupt really quickly to remind you that this coming Friday, Friday, May the 5th, 2023, is our free shipping Friday for the month of May. If you have no idea what our free shipping Friday is, it's if you go to offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, you spend $15 or more and have your package shipped in the U.S., you get free USPS shipping. Now, along with your package, this month you are also going to get a free pattern for this new peyote bracelet that I have come up with. It's got all these cute little flowers on it. You can change up the flowers, do whatever you want to. And if you really like the bracelet, you can double it and make it even thicker. So it's a fun, fun project to do. You're also gonna get, going to get a special coupon that you can use once during the month of May. So I hope you'll take advantage of our free shipping Friday, Friday, May the 5th, 2023. Now let's get back to that project. As you can see here, I've gone through and done this end and I have finished off with my 1A here on the very end. So this is gonna be if we are going to add an Axos clasp like this one here. So I'm going to take, since I'm coming out here, I'm gonna go through the open hole of the clasp. Then I'm gonna go through the next either A or B, whichever one I ended with, I'm gonna go through that bead. So for me, I ended with a B. So I'm gonna go through the B there. And you wanna make sure that that doesn't get twisted. There we go. Now I'm gonna pick up a 15 and go through the mini. You're gonna feel like you need 12 hands to keep that back while you're working. I'm gonna pick up a 15 and go through either the A or B, whichever you have here on the end. Then I'm gonna go through the end hole of my clasp. Now, this time, instead of having two that we're gonna put on this end, we're only gonna pick up one of our A's and I'm gonna make sure it's flipped towards the back like this. And I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna go through the other hole of the A and then just like normal, I'm gonna go all the way through that row. Pull it through. So that now our clasp is connected exactly like our beads are here. So at this point, what you wanna do is you want to go through and reinforce the clasp as many times as you can. So I'm gonna go through, and I couldn't get all the way through on that one, so I'm just gonna put me a little half hitch knot right in between those two beads. And then I'm going to continue to stitch through the piece until I get to the end. And now you may have to do some maneuvering because once you get these in, it gets a little bit harder to get through everything at once. So then I'm gonna put me a little half hitch knot here. Then go through the last hole. 
And then I'm just going to go through, and like I said, I'm gonna reinforce this side a couple of times. And then once I get this tied off and finished, I'm gonna do the exact same thing here on the other side to complete the bracelet. Once you complete the second side and attach your clasp, your bracelet is complete. Now, if you do not have one of these clasps, you can definitely use a regular clasp. I'm going to show you how to do that with this turquoise and bronze sample here. When you're ready to complete the bracelet, you end just like I have here with just your 1A on the end. You pick up your 15 and go through a B or an A, whatever you have here in that spot. Pick up a 15, come through the mini, pick up a 15, come through the A or the B, whatever you have here on the end, and then you're just going to pick up one A, and you let the A fall all the way down to the base. Nope. See, I did this wrong last time too. <laughs> I try that again. You're gonna pick up a 15 and an A, or an A, whatever. 15 and an A. Now, you'll take the needle. You see I flipped it back. I'm gonna go all the way across. Sometimes you can get all the way through, but if you have a bent needle like I'm using, it's a little bit harder to do. And come all the way through, pull it tight. And then when you come back this way, you're gonna go through the A, the 15, the next quarter tila, whether it be an A or a B, and a 15. You're gonna pick up five 15s. Oh, I'm sorry. Six, six 15s, seven 15s. So just pick up whatever you want. Evidently, I'm just going with it here. Two, four, six, seven 15s. And then I've already got part of my clasp attached. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread on the other part of my clasp or your first part, however you're adding it. And then I'm gonna continue through the next 15 quarter tila, 15 and quarter tila here on the end. And pull this through. And when you pull it tightly, it's going to look like this. Just like that. At this point, I'll come down through the piece. I'll come straight across again. And then when I come back this time, I will come through, go through and around. And I will do that until I feel like this is secure and then I can tie it off so that I have the clasp added on each end of the bracelet. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this new bracelet. Uh, as you can see, it stacks really well with other bracelets that you have that you may want to wear with or wear it alone. It's absolutely gorgeous and stunning in person. And I hope that you will take the time to make one of these. Um, it is... It feels a little daunting in the beginning of the bracelet just because you're trying to remember the steps. But once those steps click for you, you will fly through this bracelet. I assure you, you will fly through it. So I do have the materials that you need on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, as well as the step-by-step -step tutorial um, written pattern that you can follow. Again, you can find that at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Below in the info box, I'm going to put direct links to each of the findings that I used today. I'm gonna put a direct link to our quarter tilas, our mini gym duos, um, 
anything that I used today, basically. The pattern, all of it will be linked directly below. So I hope that you will take advantage of those links because it will make your life a lot easier. So I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.